Good morning. My name is Dale Jackson, and I'm the pastor here at Riverside Presbyterian Church. You are welcome into this time of worship. This morning I have a few announcements. I'm reminding you that the entire church facility is closed, but I am always available if you need food, medication, or anything else, please reach out to me. Tonight, the session will have a Zoom meeting at 7 o'clock. I will email the congregation the decisions that are made. Monday evening, March 30th at 7, you are invited to join me in a Zoom gathering. Have your favorite beverage or dinner if you want, and we will fellowship together and discuss the movie Okaja, which is on Netflix. Last week, I shared some tips to help you worship at home. I want to remind you of them today. Just as you would if you were in the sanctuary, you're invited to silence your cell phone. Plan to devote time to God. Try not to multitask. Consider printing the bulletin for this morning. It was emailed to many of you and is found on the website or in a link below the video. At the end of the bulletin, all sources and music are given appropriate credit. We have a very special postlude this morning. We came across a wonderful musician in Helsinki who created a video showing parts of Ireland while he played Be Thou My Vision on his Celtic harp. We contacted him and he gave his permission for us to share it with you this morning. If you want to hear more of his music, a link to his videos is in the comments below. And finally, if you can do so safely, consider lighting a candle. Every Sunday morning, we light the Christ candle to remind us of Christ's presence with us and our call to be Christ for the world. Let us worship God. Hear these words as we call ourselves to worship. In silent sanctuaries, in our houses or apartments, wherever we are in these moments of worship, early each morning, God waits to greet us with joy and wonder. During these days of isolation and worry, in this time of uncertainty and fear, Jesus challenges us with the possibility of faith. In the shadowed evenings when fear lurks outside and we long to hear the lullabies of grace, the Spirit is with us. Our opening hymn this morning is God of the Ages. Let the music play through once as an introduction, and then you are invited to sing along or meditate on the words for verses 1 and 4.
Good morning. For my children's sermon today, I have a project for you. Now, next week is Palm Sunday. You remember Palm Sunday because that's the Sunday where you get palm branches and you parade in and the choir and ringers and singers sing together. But we don't get to do that next Sunday. So I want you to be able to have your very own parade with palm branches at home. So what I need you to do this week is make a palm branch. And I'm going to show you how and um, then have it ready for us for next Sunday. Now, I have some great green paper, but if you don't have green paper, you can just get some white paper and a green marker or crayon or colored pencils, and you can decorate it any way you want. And you're going to fold it in half. You're going to take your scissors, or you're going to have your mom and dad help you with your scissors. And you're just going to cut it just like this. We don't need this piece anymore. Okay. Then you have to take your scissors and you have to make cuts at a diagonal, just like this. Don't go all the way through though. That would be that would not be right. So we keep going. All the way to the bottom. Now, we take our paper, we open it up, we lay it flat. You can find a stick or a dowel rod. I just went outside and got a stick and you're gonna lay it right down the center so it looks kind of like this, right? Like this. You're gonna take some tape and all you have to do is take your stick on. Now it's gonna be better if you have um, a nice straight stick. There we go. Put some tape on it. Okay, one more piece. There. Now, you, look there, you have a palm branch. And if you want to be really fancy, you can do the same thing again and tape it to this side and then you're You've covered your stick. So this week you need to make a palm branch for yourself. And if you want, make one for everybody in the family. That way they can help you next week in our parade of palms. I hope that you are staying safe and that you're doing what you're supposed to do. And I'll see you next week. Let's pray. God, we are so glad that you love us that you take care of us. We're glad that you know how strange and crazy our world is right now. We know that you are always with us and that you will always love us. We ask that you be with all people today, all over the world, as we Learn what it means to combat this strange, this strange sickness. In Jesus' name, amen. Join me as we turn our hearts and our minds to God's word. Let us pray together and ask God to open the scripture for our understanding. In the season of Lent, God of mercy, we need the light of your word to break forth like the dawn. If you will guide us continually, then even the parched places in us will be like a watered garden. If words of blame are replaced with your word of grace and truth, then our crumbling foundations can be rebuilt for generations. By the power of your spirit, speak to us so that our ears might be opened, so that our hearts might be willing. In Christ's name, amen. This morning, our scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. We're reading chapter 5. Seeing the multitudes, Jesus went up onto the mountain, 
When he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people reproach you, persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For that is how they persecuted their prophets who were, bef who were before you. Here ends our gospel reading. Two years ago, a group of us from the church traveled to Israel. Now, due to bad weather, half of the group ended up missing a flight and then missing our first day in Israel. That meant that when I arrived, my very first day in Israel, started with a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee and a trip to the Chapel of the Beatitudes at the foot of the mountain. The foot of the mountain where it is believed that Jesus gave his sermon. It was a beautiful way to begin our time in Israel. I was immediately engulfed in a feeling that would come to me again and again in our travels. I'm standing in the same part of the world where Jesus stood and taught. The Beatitudes are a favorite passage of mine. Last week I came across Nadia Bowles Weber's reflections on the Beatitudes, and her insights invited me to think of them, uh, think of this overly familiar passage in a new way. She says, It can be easy to view the Beatitudes, the blessed R's, we just heard, as Jesus' command for us to try real hard to be meeker, poorer, and mournier, in order that we might be blessed in the eyes of God. But what if, she says, the Beatitudes aren't about a list of conditions we should try and meet to be blessed? I was intrigued. You know, usually when I hear the Beatitudes, I think Jesus is giving me a list of things that I need to do in order to be blessed. You know, when Jesus says, blessed are the meek, I think, am I meek? Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers. And, and I wonder if I have been about the business of creating peace. But maybe I've been reading the Beatitudes all wrong. Maybe I've misunderstood Jesus' instructions. Maybe the Beatitudes aren't instructions at all. Again, Bowles Weber says, maybe the Sermon on the Mount is all about Jesus' seemingly lavish blessing of the world around him, especially that which society doesn't seem to have much time for, people in pain, people who work for peace instead of profit, people who exercise mercy instead of vengeance. So, says Bowles Weber, maybe Jesus is actually just blessing people, especially the people who never seem to receive blessings otherwise. I mean, come on, doesn't that just sound like something Jesus would do, extravagantly throwing around blessings as though they grew on trees? Hmm. Throwing around blessings as if they grew on trees. I like that phrase of hers. Maybe you think that that is a stretch or a distortion of the Beatitudes. But picture Jesus just sitting there. Looking out 
and seeing those closest to him, his disciples. And then people from all over the region who came to hear his thoughts, his teachings. And Jesus saw people, just people. Some were meek, some were persecuted, some were mourning. And he decided to bless them. Isn't that what God does again and again? God blesses, God heals, God feeds, God seeks to be in relationship with us. I'm beginning to understand the Beatitudes in a new way. Reverend David Luce, former president of Luther Seminary in Philadelphia, suggests that if we have a problem with understanding God as being a God who blesses humanity time and time again, then we have a distorted view of God. We see God as a demanding lawgiver instead of a God who blesses without requirement. Or maybe you do understand God as a God of blessing, but you feel that you are not worthy enough of such blessing. You know, we've been conditioned to believe that we are unworthy of unconditional love. That we're not good enough for God's blessing. That we have to be better, be more, do more. We are conditioned to believe that we only get what we deserve. But maybe the point of the Beatitudes is to remind us that God blesses, a, blesses us apart from anything we have done or set apart from anything we have earned. Maybe God isn't even interested in what we think we deserve. In the Beatitudes, Jesus is blessing people, all kinds of people. People that society probably thinks don't deserve his blessing or his love. But the author of Matthew is clear. Jesus isn't setting up conditions to be blessed. He's just blessing people. This morning, at this time in our world when things are still so very strange and so very different, I want to remind you that God blesses even as you sit at home, some of you may be afraid, some of you may be angry, some of you may be lonely, some of you may be frustrated with your spouse, or, or your children, or your job, or your elected officials. But know, even through all that, that God blesses you. Not for what you have done or what you feel, but because that is what God does. God is a God of blessing. According to the National Geographic, Pope Gregory I ordered the people to be in unceasing prayer for divine intervention because of the plague. Part of his edict included demanding that when you hear someone sneeze, which was often the first symptom of the pl plague, that you immediately said, God bless you. The mantra we, re we repeat so regularly started as a way to ward off evil, disease, and death. I want us to reclaim those three powerful words this week. God bless you. To signify not fear, but joy, not disease, but delight, not death, but God's love. I want us to reclaim those three words to remind us that we are God's own beloved and blessed children. Now, since most of you are at home, or you should be at home, I decided it was an excellent opportunity to give you homework. So in your bulletin, if you didn't print it out, um, you can, or you can 
take a piece of paper and draw a large heart. And in it, I want you to list the ways that you are blessed. I want you to think about all the ways that God blesses you, even now. And then, think of a way that you can be a blessing to others. Even now. And write those ways in your heart as well. The Beatitudes are all about Jesus blessing us. For no other reason than the fact that he loves us and that he cares for us. I invite you to continue to reflect on the Beatitudes as you hear a new version based on the writings of Nadia Bowles. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the agnostics. Blessed are they who doubt, those who aren't sure, who can still be surprised. Blessed are they who are spiritually impoverished, and therefore not so certain about everything that they no longer take in new information. Blessed are those who have nothing to offer. Blessed are they for whom nothing seems to be working. Blessed are the poor in spirit, you are of heaven, and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are they for whom death is not an abstraction. Blessed are they who have buried their loved ones, for whom tears are as real as an ocean. Blessed are they who have loved enough to know what loss feels like. Blessed are the mothers of the miscarried. Blessed are those who can't fall apart because they have to keep it together for everyone else. Blessed are the motherless, the alone, the ones from whom so much has been taken. Blessed are those who still aren't over it yet. Blessed, Blessed are, are those, those who, mourn. who mourn. You, you are, are of heaven, heaven and, and Jesus, Jesus blesses, blesses you. you. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who no one else notices, the kid who sits alone at a middle school lunch table, the laundry guys at the hospital, sex workers, and the night shift street sweepers. Blessed are the losers and the babies and the parts of ourselves that are so small. The parts of ourselves that don't want to make eye contact with a world that only loves the winners. Blessed, Blessed are the are forgotten. forgotten. Blessed are the closeted. Blessed are the unemployed, the unimpressive. Blessed are the teens who have to figure out ways to hide the new cuts on their arms. Blessed, Blessed are, the meek. are the meek. You, you are, of are of heaven and Jesus, and Jesus blesses, blesses you. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the wrongly accused, the ones who never catch a break the ones for whom life is hard, for they are those with whom Jesus chose to surround himself. Blessed are those without documentation. Blessed are the ones without lobbyists. Blessed are foster kids and trophy kids and special ed kids and every other kid who just wants to feel safe and loved and never does. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are they who know there has to be more than this, because they are right. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the burnt out social workers and the overworked teachers and the pro bono case takers. Blessed are the kids who step between the bullies and the weak. Blessed are they who delete hateful, homophobic comments off their friend's Facebook page. Blessed is everyone who has ever forgiven me when I didn't deserve it. Blessed and the merciful, for they totally get it.
As we turn to God once again in prayer, during the moments of silence, I invite you to lift the prayers in your heart to God. Let us pray. One thing we know, listener to our hearts, you are the one who journeys with us in these days of confusion and who waits for us at our final destination. One thing we know, healer of our lives, when we find ourselves in valleys veiled in shadows, you are walking alongside us, even though we may never notice. One thing we know, comforter of our souls, when we are weakened by the burdens of our lives, when fear disrupts our lives, you come to us to rest your strengthening peace upon us. One thing we know, God and community, holy and one. Once we cannot see you in every moment, but now our eyes are opened wide. And so we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning I wanted to include a minute for mission for the one great hour of sharing offering. It is a video by Reverend Bryce Wiebe, who is the Director of Special Offerings for the Presbyterian Church USA. He shares a little bit about the One Great Hour of Sharing, about the time that we're in, and then sings for us a very familiar song. Couple of years we've been engaging uh, the overarching theme for special offerings about we are the church together and that comes from a children's hymn that's near and dear to my heart and so at this present moment uh, we wanted you to know as the church we are indeed together we're praying for one another we're trying to stand with one another and help the most vulnerable so um, as part of that as part of a gift as part of our prayer uh, dr. Bill McConnell mission engagement advisor for the Presbyterian Mission Agency has joined me and we're going to sing a few verses of We Are the Church together. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. We're many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages too all times and places. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. And when we cannot gather, they're still singing, they're still praying, they're still laughing, and there's crying too. And all of its saying, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Every week we pass these plates and invite you to think of the ways that God has blessed you. And then respond to those blessings by presenting your tithes and your offerings. As God's people, we are called to treat people in the same way we think God would treat people. To that end, the session is committed 
to paying all our staff during these difficult times. If you normally put your offerings in the plate, please consider mailing them to the church or going to the website and clicking on the Donate Now button. <laughs> up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may the God who loves us all hold you in the palm of God's hand.